All right, the world's cheapest camcorders. I, I, I know camcorders are outdated. Nobody uses them anymore. I mean, the cell phone has pretty much made everything here. Uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. I love camcorders, I think they're cool. One of the things I like about camcorders in general is they're made for video. The DSLR cameras that people use that take video, they're made mainly for taking pictures, but they also take video. Camcorders are made for video. You can run them all day long, they won't overheat. You can run them for five hours and they'll still run. I mean, that's what they're made for. And the thing about camcorders is they're made for idiots. You don't even need to know where the on button is. You just open up the flippy screen and it go. it just goes on immediately and then you just push the record button and that's it and it has most almost all of them have a flippy screen that flips around so you can see yourself to take a video how easy is that i mean they're so easy to use you don't even have to know what you're doing the most of the cameras nowadays you have to know what you're doing you got to kind of figure it out anyway i'm going to go through the world's cheapest camcorders are they any good let's find out um oh and that's another thing about camcorders that's really cool most of the the pretty good ones they all have stabilization most of the cameras nowadays that's kind of a rare thing they're starting to put that in there but camcorders in general uh, like from $200 and up they all have image stabilization so you can shake it a little bit and it'll be stabilized um, cameras that's still an iffy thing there's just some things about camcorders that are really good and practical if you're into videos not everybody takes pictures there are some people who just want to take home movies now I know the cell phone is kind of taken over that world but yeah there's still something to be said about camcorders there's there's something fun and cool about them i mean they're that's what they're made for look how small these things are and so i wanted to see how good are the really cheap ones and how cheap can you go and is it even usable so let's start this is and, and i've got some really good ones over here so i'm going to compare the really cheapy ones with the good ones with the, the the name brands so starting at the very bottom here and i'm going to show you clips from each one and what it looks and you decide for yourself you decide uh what you think because some people might like it some people might might think oh, this is garbage but anyway let's start with this little thing look at this $16 it has a little screen that opens up no matter how cheap it gets they all have a little screen an lcd screen i can't see what i'm doing it's a tiny little camera screen doesn't flip around, but this is the EcoSyn 2020. I put it on a tripod because it's too shaky uh, by hand holding it, but this is what it looks like when uh, you just put it on a tripod and you're just recording with the basic $16 little tiny little camera. It's, uh, it's artificial lighting, how it looks. Okay, so that's $16. Moving up a step, this one is $26. It almost looks the same. It kind of is the same. I have a feeling some of these, they use the same bodies, but they just changed a few things on them. This is the Vivitar DVR 508 NHD, and it's cost $26. You can't do custom white balancing with these cheap little cameras, but you can set it to daylight. So let's see what that looks like. I can't turn the screen around to see myself. So anyway, there's a little Vivitar. $26. This is by Vivitar. 508 NHD. All right, moving up to $29.77. This is another Vivitar. This one, it's really cool. This is a, you just plug it right into your laptop or whatever, and that's your USB thing. The screen is on the back. It does not have a flippy screen. And if you want to take a video yourself, you push this button here and you just go like this, and this is what it looks like. It's $30, this is the Vivitar DVR 880. I can't see what I'm doing because there's no flip out screen. HD, yeah. $29.77, toys for kids. All right, the next one up. Look how shiny and cool and red this thing is. Uh, this one here is $30 and the screen does flip. Now, the thing about this one, it's upside down. Everything is upside down. They couldn't afford the software to <laughs> make it flip right side up. But here's the quality. All right, this is a $30 generic camera. It has no model number, no company name. I'll put the link down below. It's test number two. Uh, <laughs> the screen flips around, but it's upside down. Well, it doesn't look too bad in the screen. Lightweight, it's just upside down. That's just so weird. There's no brand name, there's no model number, it's just a red shiny thing from China. I mean, the screen's pretty good looking as far as the screen, but it's upside down. Anyway, uh, so that's that's that one, that's 30 bucks. All right, moving up here. 
A little bit bigger, another cool red looking one, Vivitar 810 HD. This does not have a flippy screen, and here's the quality of it. Moving up now, this is the V Motol. Open it up, it should say hello. They all make these cute little sounds. This does have a flippy screen, really basic in the way it works. Very lightweight. I kind of like this one. It feels really cool. Here's what the video quality looks like. This is a $44 camcorder, the Vimo Tall. The screen looks really dark and muddy. The screen looks blue and contrasty and dark, so I have no idea what this is going to look like. Let me walk out here for a minute here. Now it looks green. Now it looks blue. All right, this is black and white. This is just uh, black and white setting and the effects. It's got a lot of effects in this thing. It's plus two saturate, uh, plus two exposure. And this is infrared style. This is undertone style. Finally got it together, it looks like. This is the auto white balance. Watch. Okay, that last one was 720p. This is 1080p. <laughs> Look at this. Watch this. Watch, watch the exposure change. Whoa. All right, so that one was $44. The thing about these cheaper cameras is if you're gonna use them for selfies and you know, for taking a video of yourself like this, <clears throat> The hand holding, they're going to be too jerky. They're just way too jerky because there's no stabilization in the really cheap ones. You're going to have to put them on a tripod. Then they actually get kind of okay. They become more acceptable. Another thing about the cheap camcorders is they have basic white balance, but no custom white balance. They just have sunlight, tungsten, shadow, nighttime, stuff like that. Moving up, this one, look at the paint job on this thing. This is like a sports car, it's so cool. This is a Samsung flash cam. Really small, lightweight. Um, they don't make it anymore, but you can buy it on eBay. It's like 50 bucks or something like that. It has a button called Easy Q. I don't know what it means, I just clicked on it, but my face looks blue. Another cool thing about this is as the screen is facing you, it has a little joystick on it, so you can adjust and play with the different settings on the screen. It's interlaced footage. That's not something you really want nowadays. It's got a really good LCD screen. Samsung flash cam, 50 bucks. All right, moving up. Now we have a Kimmery. This one is $54. Really sharp images for a tiny camcorder, 6,000 by 4,500 resolution. The video, however, is not really that great. Terrible uh, LCD screen. <laughs> Next, this is the Vivitar DVR 410. Now this one has a flippy screen that flips around, which is kind of cool. The images, the video looks like Super 8 home movies like we did in the 60s and 70s. It, so if you really want that home movie look, this is a good camera for that. And it's so, look at that, it's flat and you can put it in your pocket, lightweight. It's kind of fun. So this is the Vivitar 410, it's $59. <laughs> Cheap, but it's kind of, <laughs> for $59, um, generic camera. The flip out screen is pretty good quality. You know, you could give these cameras to your kids because they're going to break things anyway. So it's, a, it's like the, your first video camera to learn with. All right, so that was $59. Moving up now to $90. Ooh. All right, this one has a microphone that you can put on top. This and it plugs into the camera. The microphone has a little battery in it. Then here's what the video looks like. It looks really good on the screen here, but let's see what it looks like in actuality on a computer. The color is not perfect, but it's pretty close. I mean, it's good quality for what it is. I mean, it's 90 bucks, but it looks cool, and that's really what matters. You want people to be impressed with what you're holding in your hands. Looks pretty good, actually, on, on the screen here. Now, as you can tell, the audio quality isn't that great, even though it has this fancy looking microphone on top, but uh, that's what $90 gets you. 2.7K, ooh. All right, moving up now, also $90. And looks like this. Here's what the video looks like. It's, uh, but it changes color. This is the uh, 201LM from China. That's what that one looks like, $90. Moving up now to the next one, which is $100, infrared, ooh, it's got a square thing on the front, ooh, and it's got a microphone on top, so this one looks more impressive, right? Here's what the video looks like for this thing. $100 for this thing. 
Oh, and it has a touch screen. Now we get to the first name brand camera. This is a Sony TG5V. What it is, is it's like a small handheld thing. It has a flip out screen so you can see yourself. And there's a big button on the back. You just push the button and it starts recording the video. And it has a zoom that you can zoom in and out. You just turn the knob for zooming. And uh, here's what the video looks like. This little Sony TG5V has better skin tones than even the more expensive video cameras. It's amazing. This little thing is so flat and small, you can literally fit it in your pocket. The flip out screen is a touch screen, so you can do spot meter, spot focus, and manual white balance, all kinds of stuff. But what's really impressive about this camera is it has image stabilization. For a tiny little thing the size of a deck of cards that have image stabilization, it's just amazing. This is like great for vlogging. It has a titanium body, which is impressive. <laughs> anyway, it's 150, 200 bucks on eBay, used. Uh, it's ABC HD, which is old tech, but I, I think the video quality is pretty darn good for this little thing. They uses the flash uh, memory, the, the, the uh, flash stick duo, whatever. Anyway, uh, so that's the first name brand. Again, uh, 150 to $200 on eBay. Next step up, we get another Sony. This is a little tiny Sony. This is a CX405. There's no buttons or anything on here. It's just really, really basic. You just push the record. Everything else is on the screen. It has a menu and a little joystick that you can move things with. It's kind of cool because you can be like aiming it at yourself and you can be joysticking the screen for whatever function it is you want. And the quality is impressive. This is the Sony CX405, it's $200. Tiny little camcorder. It's cute, lightweight, really small, really lightweight. All right, this is the Sony CX405. I just turned it on and pushed go. I didn't adjust anything. And uh, the screen is bright and clear and looks good. It has a little, uh, th uh, what do you call it, a joystick on the screen. So you can actually adjust the screen as you're looking at yourself, which is really cool. I think once it hits the $200 mark, it's, it's like, okay, Time to get serious. This is about as entry level as it gets for name brands, and yeah, it's pretty good. Did you know this thing has a 60 times zoom? Wow, that is crazy. A tiny, tiny little Sony camcorder. It's really small, really lightweight, super small, but it's $200. So it's still up there in the normal price range, but it's, it's a Sony and it's got cool flip around screen. The screen looks great. Everything looks great, really lightweight. The 405 by Sony, $200. It actually has white balance. You can actually do custom white balance with this camera, which is really, um, that's what a relief for me. Most people don't care, but uh, it's the only way you can get really good color. I'm doing this while I am recording. That is cool. And it's got a little joystick on there. And then when I put it down, I push OK. So how do I look now? Do I look better? I hope so. Anyway, this is a cute little camera. It's so lightweight, it's so small, and it's a Sony. I think this looks good. This almost looks better than the daylight stuff. So, I uh, yeah, yeah, okay. I'm just gonna sit here and look at myself for, for, for a while. It also takes pictures. Let's take a picture. I just love camcorders. I love camcorders. I don't care whatever the rest of the world is doing. Camcorders are just cool. You open them up, you push go, and they record. It's that simple. I manually adjusted the white balance. I can manually focus it. I can manually adjust the iris and the shutter. It's pretty cool for a tiny little camera. It has a lot of features that you can do manually. And of course, auto too. And I know what you guys are thinking. Does it have a mic jack? Does it have a mic jack? No, it doesn't have a mic jack. It's only 200 bucks. It has a Zeiss lens too. Oh, that's pretty cool. By Sony. Anyway, uh, by Sony. So uh, CX405 by Sony. $200, you can get these brand new, these, these are still out. Look how small and lightweight. This is really, really lightweight. I mean, super lightweight and small. All right, moving up now, back to China again. This is 4K, ooh, 48 megapixel pictures. You'd, th you'd think this thing was amazing, right? All right, it's recording. Thank God, jeez. $246. Next one, back to uh, name brands. Now we have a Canon Vixia R800. It's pretty cool. I mean, this is the first of the consumer cameras that has a little bit of everything. It even has a mic jack, touch screen and all that. So here's the quality of the Canon Vixia R800. This is what it sounds like with the microphone that just comes with it. $260 is still pretty doable. Okay, this is the tiny little Canon Vixia R800. I'm hand holding it because it has image stabilization. Look at this, I'm shaking the camera. Pretty darn stable. Has a big giant flip out screen, has a mic jack, so I'm plugging in my uh, 
any powered microphone you plug in here will work. Um, it has a uh, touch screen, so you can touch the screen and change anything you want. This is a pretty good automatic camera. It recognizes your face, puts a little square around it, follows you around, which is really cool. Nice big flip out screen. I manually white balance myself, custom white balance, which is great. You can do manual focus and all that other stuff, but you don't have to because it has great automatic settings that recognizes your face, so it follows you around as a square around your face. For vlogging, I mean, this is, you know, where you don't have to think about anything, you just turn it on and go. It's, I don't think it's too bad. Canon R800, uh, $260. All right, here's an interesting one. This is by Zoom. This is an audio company that made a camcorder. It has a flip out screen, which is really nice. The mic flips up, has a gain control on the mic, but look at this. All the controls on this camera are audio controls. All the dials and buttons are audio controls. It has two XLR jacks on the back. This microphone can be replaced with a shotgun mic. These are both mics that come with the F1 field recorder. Even the screen, look at this. The screen is all audio controls. Low cut, dynamics, everything like that. This whole camera is audio. The only thing you can adjust on here for video is the on off button <laughs> to record or not record. So this is the zoom video camera, which doesn't even zoom. In fact, this is the first video camera ever to care less about video than audio. This screen is so washed out and blue looking, it's terrible. Right now I'm using the SGH6 shotgun mic, which is the same attachment that's optional with the F1 field recorder. This is an audio company, not a video company. It's just a cool idea for a camera to have good audio and everything, flip out screen, Mike, but... Moving up, I have four of these. There's the Panasonic X900. I've had these for almost 10 years. This was the best camera you could get back in the day. I still use them. They're really cool. Huge flip screen. And here's the quality. This is the X900. One of the things I love about this camera is it has great audio. Right now I have a Rode Filmmaker wireless system, which is just a cheap consumer wireless system plugged into it. But you could run a professional wired lavalier mic into it. And when it's a hot day and the sun is blazing out, and I just want to turn the camera on and push record and get great audio, this is the camera I always have used for 10 years. I've made so many videos with the X900 over the last 10 years, even just a week or two ago. I I'm still using them. I'm still using them. When it's a really hot day and I can't deal with focusing or color or white balancing or anything, I just turn it on and push record. It's not super sharp, but it's really reliable. It's really dependable. It can run on a hot day for hours without running out. That's why I have four of them. And I still use them today. I still use these cameras when I don't want to think about what I'm doing. I just turn it on and push record. That's what the camcorders are great for. They used to cost $1,000. They're like two or $300 now. So again, I've got four of these uh, Panasonic X900. You can still get some used ones. These were a thousand dollars when they first came out. You can get them used now for like 250, 300 bucks, something like that. Believe it or not, some of my biggest, most expensive private productions were made with this little tiny consumer camcorder. I mean, major productions that took months of work and lots of money, like the Spy Girl video, the Stewardess video, the Princess video, all with the X900. It's amazing what I pulled off with this little camera that most people take vacation videos with. I made full on Hollywood productions. I know people are going to say, geez, all that money and effort you put into these productions, you could have used a more expensive camera. This thing was pretty good for its time. All right, next up, back to China again. This one is $380. It's impressive looking. It's got a microphone on top. 4K. Ooh, really nice looking camera, actually. Flippy screen, nice cute little sounds. Here's the video quality. $380. All right, that's what a $380 camera from China gets you. It's, it makes really nice sounds. I mean, it's therapeutic sounds and stuff. All right, another tiny little Sony camcorder. This is the CX675. It's $500 for this little thing. Why is that, you may say? Well, let me show you. Look at that lens. See how it's floating around in there like it's in a glass of water? That is a free-floating gimbal lens. That is a really high-end image stabilization system. So when you're shaking the camera, that keeps it steady. For this tiny little camera to have that, that's amazing. It also has audio input and a headphone jack. And another way to get your audio in is through this. This is a very special Sony Hachi, which isn't just for lights, but also for professional wireless microphone systems, which is amazing for this tiny little consumer camcorder. It also has 32 gigabytes of internal memory, so you don't even need a memory card, but you can put one in if you want, the micro SD card in here. Um, it has 
custom white balance, custom everything or auto. So for just turning something on and talking with a free floating gimbal to stabilize audio inputs, custom everything, that's why this camera is $500. I, I highly recommend this camera. I really like it. It's really, really small and it's cute and it's lightweight and it's just this wonderful little companion to take along for doing vlogs and videos. So this is the tiny little CX-675. It's have a hot shoe that accepts professional Sony wireless systems like this URX ETX system, which I'm using right now. So you can plug in really good audio into this tiny little camera and you can also adjust the white balance, the focus, the exposure, the iris, everything manually if you want, or just push auto and it does everything auto. Pretty power pack little camera. Obviously it zooms, it takes pictures, it has everything. The Sony's $675, $500. Okay, next. Here we have the Panasonic V800. It's lightweight, it's got a nice big screen. Here's the quality of it. So this is the Panasonic V800. It's been manually white balanced and it has a Rode Filmmaker wireless system plugged into the mic jack. This is what it looks like and sounds like. It's lightweight and it's pretty good. This is actually a nice size for a camcorder. It's, it's not very big, it's not very heavy. So this is what it sounds like when you have a professional microphone plugged into it. This is a lavalier microphone, COS 11D, plugged into uh, the uh, mic jack. This is a manual uh, daylight. I set it to daylight, white balance. I like it. Here's a bunch of features camcorders like this have that many, if not most, DSLR cameras at the time of this video still do not. You can push a spot on the screen while shooting, and as long as you keep pushing down, the camera films in slow motion. When you let go, it goes back to shooting normal speed. And you can do this three times during one shot. It has a zoom mic and a focus mic, so you can focus your audio only on what's right in front of you, even at a distance. You can zoom your audio recording, just like you can zoom a lens. Another thing that camcorders can do is the screen can not only flip forward so you can see yourself when you're filming, but it can flip outwards on the side of the camera, which is kind of cool. This little tiny $30 camcorder can do that. It has intelligent exposure, so it brightens dark areas. It has active contrast, adjustable HDR, where you can adjust the level of contrast correction. Stable autofocus keeps focus from switching between foreground and background, even if an object passes in front of your face. You can touch an object on the screen that you want to be in focus, and it'll track that. It has hybrid optical image stabilization. When you're doing manual focus, the image magnifies to help you with critical focusing. It can even automatically correct camera tilt so the horizon stays level when you're shooting. And here's something that still cameras don't have when shooting video. Not just an external mic jack, but they can also record stereo and 5.1 surround sound. You can adjust the frequency response and high frequency range and low frequency levels. Some of the cameras can take 25 megapixel pictures, self timer, time lapse, just like a normal still camera, backlight compensation, skin softening as infrared to record stuff in the dark. You can even record in color in very dark situations. Stop motion animation. The VX1 even has dolly zoom mode and you can even edit scenes together of your favorite parts, add music, and then save it as a finished video inside the camera. All that for $500, a mic jack, all these slow motion. All right, moving up to the next one, Sony AX33. This thing is heavy, it weighs a ton, it's like a brick. That's because it has so many features. Watch the lens. As I move this around, you see what it's doing? It has its own gimbal inside there. So this is a really stabilized camera. You can shake it a little bit and it'll keep the image stable. That is really cool. That's what this camera is one of the best ones for. It takes sharp video, it's 4K. Here's uh, the footage of it. All right, so this is the Sony AX33. I use touchscreen focus, manual white balance, and I have an external wireless microphone system because it has a mic jack, so I can do external audio. This is what it looks like and sounds like. Should be pretty good. I set spot focus and spot metering on my face and uh, the white balance is set to uh, su sunlight, daylight. This camera actually is one of the best stabilization systems. The You can see the lens. It's on its own little gimbal inside there and it's floating around inside the camera. This is very famous for its stabilization that it has in the camera. Anyway, uh, so right now I have a microphone plugged into it because it has a mic jack, obviously. This is a COS 11D microphone plugged into it. And uh, this is what it sounds like when you plug a microphone into it. Only $600 for this thing. It's, it's, it's good for the money. All right, the next one up. This is the best one on this list for the consumer cameras. It's 4K, Panasonic, the VX1. Huge screen, really good quality. Here's what it looks like. All right. 
right, this is the Panasonic VX1. I manually adjusted the white balance because I could, and it has a Rode Filmmaker wireless system running into the mic jack because it has a mic jack. And I think I'm losing my voice. So here it is with the microphone plugged in. This is with a COS 11D plugged into the mic jack. This is uh, the Panasonic VX1, and it does do 4K, obviously, it's 4K. But uh, this is really, I mean, really like, this is good. It really responds well has a steady, steady shot, whatever it is, you know, stabilization. This is the VX1 at night, daylight balanced LEDs, just using the microphone on the camera. Uh, just see what it looks like at night. This one is $600 and I, there is of course much better than that, more expensive, but I just wanted to show you the consumer name brands versus the cheap generic China Vivitar ones that are out there that you can get for like 20 bucks, 50 bucks. Let's see if there's a difference. Some of you might like the novelty of the, the home movie look from the, you know, 40 years ago, the 60s and 70s, which is cool. It's cute. Uh, some of you just might like having a little plastic thing in your pocket that just the shape and size of it looks cool. I don't know. I just, I like playing with stuff. It's kind of fun, you know. If you're like me and you like to tinker and play with, I mean, everybody's got a serious camera, but then there's the little things you like to play with just for fun. That's what these are. It's just stuff I like to play with, you know. The higher end cameras, I use these for making videos also. The cool thing about cameras like this, the, the name brands, the ones that are like, you know, 500 up, $700, you open it up, it starts, and you just push the button and you go. And it can run for five hours. It will not overheat. It doesn't care how long you go. You can go for four hours as long as the SD card is big enough. Um, they autofocus. They can recognize a face. The newer ones can even track you as you're walking around. White balance is easy. Everything is made easier. Some For some reason, working a camcorder is much easier for all the things. The white balance, the focusing, the tracking. It doesn't overheat. Most most of them are stabilized, image stabilization. So I just thought I'd show you this. I mean, you know, it's fun, it's camcorders. And I wanted to see what you could get out there on Amazon that's really cheap and <laughs> fun to play with. I mean, look at this thing. Look at how cute this is. We're playing with, I mean, I don't know. It's just something different, you know? I mean, it's, you know, some people have three cars or and they just like, oh, today I feel like driving this one. Well, same with this, it's like, I let me play with this one today. This is kind of fun. It's how can you not enjoy this? I do. That's just me. I'm a weirdo, I guess. Anyway, so well, that's my uh, thing for today. World's cheapest camcorders. I hope you liked it. And be sure to also see my video on the actual vlogging camera reviews, a serious vlogging camera review where you can like the best cameras for taking vlogs of yourself. Um, you might enjoy that too. You might enjoy my whole video channel, my whole uh, photography channel. So subscribe, tell your friends about it. You might even win some free stuff. Like right now, I'm gonna give these ones away. Uh, keep in mind that uh, what I showed you in this video, the samples of what these things take is best case scenario. Your results may vary. <laughs> that's all, that's my disclaimer here. So um, if you see one of these models you like, uh, email free stuff at marcuspix.com, M A R K U S, um, and let me know which one you want, okay? Free stuff at marcuspix.com. Email your address. It's amazing how many people send me an email that says, Yes, I'd like one. And they give me their name, but they don't give me an address where to send it to. So I need your name and your mailing address. <laughs> I can't send something if I don't have a mailing address. All right, so let's start with the first one here. I'm gonna give the two Vivitars away together because they're really not that great quality. This is like the worst quality ever, but it's just a fun thing to have. I think the the uh, the USB thing on here is to charge it. I'm not sure. To take the, the, the memory out, you use a, an SD card. But anyway, this one's kind of cute. This one actually isn't too bad. So I'm gonna give these away together, two Vivitars. That, that's my first one. Second one, the, um, what is this? The uh, FHD, we'll call it the FHD 1080p. This is actually pretty good. Uh, this is would make a good child's toy. So uh, if you have a child and you wanna start them with the first thing and you're expecting them to break it, <laughs> this is a good one to start them with. This one's a better quality one. This is the, let's call this one the 2.7K. Remember the audio isn't that great, but the video is actually pretty good. We'll call this one the 2.7K. 
Here's the Sony TG5V. Uh, I got this on eBay. The flippy screen is kind of loose, so it still works. It still works, but um, but it, it's a great little camera. The TG, the Sony TG5V. Next one up is the uh, Zoom Handycam, the Q8. It comes with this microphone here. The shotgun was an option that I'm using for my F1 uh, field recorder, but this is the one that it comes with. This is great for audio. I'm uh, giving away the flash cam, the flash cam from Samsung, the shiny red sports car that shoots uh, like VHS quality video, and lastly, the Canon Vixia. Uh, keep in mind, uh, most people are going to want the Vixia and uh, I will, you know, there's only so many people that your odds are better if you don't pick the Vixia. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the fifth person um, that asks for any one of these. All right. The fifth person that asks for a particular camera is the one that's going to get it. And I will post the winners in the links below this video. I'm going to post the name of the winner below this video to show you that. So if you want one of these, check to make sure nobody's won it yet. And if it's still available, then request it at free stuff at marcuspix.com. Uh, I'm here to help sh share the joy of photography. That's what this is about. Um, it's just having fun. It's not having the biggest, most expensive bells and whistles. It's all about having fun. So uh, hopefully my channel helps inspire you to have some fun. So stay tuned. Tell your friends about Marcus Picks. Enjoy your week. I'll see you in the next video.